Hello everyone, my name is Andrew, and today we'll be tackling another Yusuko problem in the February contest of the 2016 contest. So this is going to be in the bronze vision, it's called Circular Barn. It's quite quick and easy, so let's just get into it. Alright, let's just start reading and try to decipher this problem and what it wants us to do. Alright, so being a fan of contemporary architecture, Farmer John has built a new barn in the shape of a perfect circle. So inside, the barn consists of a ring of N rooms numbered clockwise from 1 to N around the perimeter of the barn, and is between 3 and 1,000. Each room has its doors to its neighboring rooms and also a door opening to the exterior of the barn. So uh, if we just draw this out real quick, we can just draw a circle. Ah, oh, that's a really bad circle. Um, let's try again. Okay, that's better. And inside the barn consists of a ring of N rooms numbered clockwise from 1 to N around the perimeter of the barn N is between 3. So let's just say that N is 3 and in that case we have 3 rooms. So uh, we have 3 rooms here. Um, uh, I'm, I'm just going to assume that they're congruent. I'm just not the best artist. So, and they have doors in between each other. So just assume these are doors. So entry between each room is allowed. And they also have doors. Uh, oh, I'm bad at drawing. Okay, so they also have doors bet uh, leading to the outside. So in this case, the end is equal to three. So you can travel from this room to that room, this room to that room, and this room to that room, and vice versa for each of them. So let's just do all that and leave our circle. So Farmer John wants exactly our eye cows to end up in each room. I. So, the, to herd the cows into the room in an orderly fashion, he plans to unlock the exterior door of a single room, allowing the cows to enter through that door. Each cow then walks clockwise through the rooms until she reaches a suitable destination. Farmer John wants to unlock the exterior door that will cause his cows to collectively walk a minimum total of total amount of distance. Please determine the minimum total distance that his cows would need to walk if he chooses the best such door to unlock. The distance walked by a single cow is the number of exterior interior doors through which she passes. Alright, so pretty simple. We just have basically a circular barn and we have cows walking through it. So we determine the minimum amounts um, to meet the conditions that Farmer John sets. Alright, so the first line of input contains N and each of the rema remaining N lines contains R1 to Rn. Alright, let's see here. So in this case, we have uh, five rooms, and in this case, uh, so let's just draw this out first. So um, five, that would be, um, oh God. So let's just do that real quick. And then from there, we can say one, oops, oh my God. Um, get like that maybe, okay. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's six. Okay. Um. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so yeah, let's just assume the rooms are congruent. I'm just not the best artist. So we have five rooms, and uh, this doesn't have to be in any order since it's a circular barn. But anyways, it says that a uh, room needs to have four, a room needs to have seven, a room needs to have eight, a room needs to have six, and a room needs to have four in that order. So let's just draw this out. So it's just five rooms and it's four, seven, eight, six, and four. All right, so let's just work out the sample out input and see how it gets the sample output. So in this example, the best solution is to let the cows enter through the door that requires seven cows. So uh, if we let the cows uh, enter through this door, so just remember that each of these, uh, oops, each of these rooms has uh, doors uh, between them, like four and seven. The cows can go between these two rooms, and for every single room, and they can also enter in through uh, any room from the outside. So in this guy, in this case, the optimal uh, path would just be to enter through seven. And basically, from the what they explained above, that means that as soon as they enter seven, that means uh, eight cows will have to travel all the way to this room and fill it up. And then 
six cows will need to travel all the way to this room and fill it up. And then four cows will need to travel to this room and fill it up. And finally, four cows will travel to this room and fill it up. Well, remember, if we go up a bit, that we need to determine the minimum total distances cows will need to walk if you choose the best tour to unlock. So basically, a distance is determined by how many rooms uh, they will have to walk through to uh, reach a suitable destination. So in this case, um, when they reach room seven, uh, zero, we can, um, no matter how cows, uh, how, how many cows there are, uh, the, the cows that fill up the room seven or the seven cows that fill up this room do not need to walk any distance. So we, that is negli negligible. So only eight cows need to walk a minimum of one dis a uh, minimum distance of one. Six cows will need to walk a distance of two. Four cows will need to walk a distance of three. Basically one, two, three. And then four cows will need to walk a distance of four. So one, two, three, and then four. So they, they total 48. So let's just see how they got that. So we have eight cows that walk one. So eight times one. And then we have plus six cows that walk a distance of two rooms. So six times two plus four cows that walk the distance of three rooms. So plus four times three, plus uh, four cows that walk the distance of four rooms. Four times four. So if we just do order of operations and do math, we get eight plus 12, plus 12, plus 16. So eight plus 12 is 20, plus that is 32. So then we get 32 plus 16 and we just get 48 all right so now that we know how the basically the sample input generates the sample output and basically the understanding of the problem we can start thinking about how we're going to approach coding for this problem all right so basically the approach to solving this problem i think is actually really simple um since we have a circle of uh, basically numbers we can just assume that it's an array of numbers so um, if we go back to our sample case, um, we have uh, five, um, basically uh, five uh, rooms, or basically numbers, and all right, and then we have uh, four, seven, uh, eight, six, four, and basically we can put these numbers into an array. But basically, the basic approach is that uh, basically we try all of the rooms, and then we try every for every. Uh, room that we start with we go around in the circle and then we go to the pro and we do the process that we did before and we calculate all the possible combination or all the possible sums and see which one is the minimum and basically we set the minimum variable to integer dot max value so we can uh, be sure that we're getting a minimum number so we set it to integer dot min value and this will uh, basically allow us to uh, achieve a, a number that is definitely uh, the smallest out of all of them. So uh, we don't really have a specific order since the numbers are within a circle. So we need to know how to, know how to basically run through an array that basically is going to recurse on itself. So in this case, the order they give us is 4, 7, um, 8, 6, 4. But um, our approach makes us uh, want to try all of them. And when trying all of them, we have to run through the array over and over. So if we, even if, so if we start with four, um, that means we check all of the numbers and we stop at four, at the second four. And basically we check uh, some, basically the process that we did before, um, basically multiply um, the amount of cows that are needed by the amount of rooms they travel. And we calculate the sum. But in this case, how do we calculate the sum for seven? Uh, we go through the array and then we stop at four. So we have to go back to the beginning of the array and do the ones that we didn't do yet. So we need a way to basically run through the array uh, recursively or basically in a circular fashion. So uh, in order to solve that approach, I decided to use modulo or basically whatever number we have, we divide it by N basically. And the remainder is the amount of we need to traverse again. So, for example, um, for seven, we need to traverse. Um, we need to start again at the array and traverse one more, since four is not counted um, after we run through the entire array. So, using that manner, we can run through the entire array in a circular fashion and calculate the 
sum and compare it to a minimum value. If it is smaller than the minimum value, then we set it to the min. Then the minimum value becomes uh, that value, and from there we can basically just print out the minimum. So it's a pretty simple approach. So now that we have our thought process down, we can just start thinking about coding. All right, hi, hello guys, I'm back. Um, so right now I have my IDE open, and we'll be it's basically just writing the code down. So let's just open up our IDEs here real quick, and then let's open that up. Okay. All right, so I have my two, uh, basically my two input output uh, file reading uh, methods here. And I used buffer reader, print writer. You don't have to. You can use scanner. And I think in like in the new contest, they started using standard input and output. But um, for now, we can just use the input and output files. So uh, the input and output files, I believe, are called C barn. Uh, yep, C barn. So this would just be C barn in and C barn dot out. I copy and pasted the original uh, buffer reader and print writer code from another project I had. So. Our first thing we need to do is a read in for our input would just be, let's see here, would just be n, and the rest is just uh, uh, the basically the bar numbers, basically what how many cows each room has to have. So in n equals integer dot parse int br dot read line, and then we have uh, let's just create an array to store the numbers each room needs to have. Let's just call it rooms. And you int, and this is going to be length n since there are n rooms in this barn. And then we have, um, let's just read it. So for an i equals zero, i is less than n, i plus plus. Uh, string, let's just take, declare a new string tokenizer here that's going to tokenize each basically uh, space, ser space ser separated integer. And new string tokenizer, oops. Uh, br dot read line in rooms i uh, equals to your dot parse int st dot oops dot next token okay all right so now that we have our we have our input read in and stored into basically a, uh, an integer and an array um let's just create a variable that's going to store the minimum value and this is what this is what we're going to end up returning or printing to uh the grader so let's do int min equals integer dot max value so that we so we know that we're we're definitely going to get a minimum value and yeah so that's an input done so now based on our original approach we go back to it we're going to oops uh, where did my word go? okay so i think i accidentally zoomed out and zipboard is weird but essentially we're just going to take our array um in this case it's going to be uh four seven eight six four and we're going to traverse it in a circular fashion and what I mean is that um, if we go, to, if we start from four, that means we just traverse the array and we're done. However, if we start from seven, which we're going to have to do, basically we're going to start from each one and basically check for every single possible um, uh, sum for each one and check whether it's uh, smaller than our current minimum. And we're going to basically set it as the minimum if it's smaller. So for seven, that would just be for four. If we start from four, then it would just be four times one plus. Uh, 7 times 2 plus 8 times 3 plus 6 times 4 uh, plus 4 times 4 and then that should give us a sum and we check if that's great, uh, smaller than a minimum and we repeat the same process for 7 7 times 1 plus 8 times uh, 2 I mean eight, yeah, 8 times 2 you get the idea so in this case how do we get 4 again if uh, we basically we go off after four we get seven and then we seven eight six four but how do we come back all the way to four well uh, like we discussed earlier we have to use a modulo thing or basically we find the remainder of our current uh, iterative um, value so in i equals zero i is less than n so first we're going to traverse the array and basically if we're going to check each one we have to do a nested uh, for loop but for now, let's just do in total. So this is going to be the sum of the numbers, and this is going to be the value that we're going to compare to the minimum value. So in total equals zero, and then 
for int j equals zero. J is less than n again, and j plus plus. And then it's uh, int sum equals i plus j. So what is sum? Well, sum is going to be basically the value that we iterated by. So in this case, uh, if we start with four and we traverse the array, uh, we're going to take the sum of basically this order. Well, if, after that, we have to traverse to seven. So basically, it's a nested for loop. We take four, we loop through, and we check. We take seven, we loop through, and we check. We take eight, we loop through, and we check, and so on. But sum is going to allow us to uh, iterate in a circular fashion. Basically, we come back to the beginning once we reach the end. So in sum equals f plus j, and basically what we're going to do is, if sum is greater than or equal to n, basically, um, say after four, we're at seven, and we have to loop through this but in this case the array is going to go out of bounds so if that happens we have to go back to the beginning and read in the first one or whatever uh, value we need so in this case if sum is greater than or equal to n then sum is going to equal to its uh, remainder of n so for example um, if we're going to loop uh, after four if we have seven sum is going to be uh, in this case i is a one and j is going to be equal to well, basically n plus one and n plus one divided by n remainder is going to be one so when it comes back it's going to iterate by one here so in this case uh sum is going to equal two percent n and uh total is going to plus equal to sum or rooms uh, times sum times j. Now, why do we do this? Um, basically, if we go back, we can see that the algorithm is that we multiply the amount of cows needed in each room by the number of rooms. So, for example, in this case, we have five rooms. And we have four, seven, eight, six, four. And in this case, for the example output, we start with seven. So seven is going to be room, uh, basically eight is going to be equal to room one. Six is room two, four is room three, and uh, four is room four. All right, so knowing that, uh, we can take the minimum now and check whether it's uh, goes so now we're just going to check whether our total is less than min, and we're going to set it to that using win statement uh, math.min statement. Finally, uh, when all is said and done, we print out our minimum, and that's what they want, the minimum distance, pw.close, and br.close. Alright, so I think now it should work. So, oops, this is sheet barn. Okay. So now it should work, and if we now we if we plug it into the online grade server, uh, it should work. So let's try it out, and I'll see you guys when I find my file again. All right, guys, I'm back on the Usco website here. I found my file, and let's just try running it. So I think this should work. Um, I've already done this problem before, so yeah, just try it out. And there we go. So, thank you guys for watching. That was 2016 February contest circuit problem two, circular barn. And I hope you guys enjoyed. If you found this interesting or helpful to in your use code journey, and uh, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.